you talked about the writing topics. So you would give them a writing prompt. I loved your thing that you tweeted the other day with kids about your brain prompts. Yeah. The secret shake. Yeah. How did you do that? So can you describe it first? Sure. So um, once again, I'm just trying to write, trying to create um, writing prompts or tasks where the students are ex excited to open Seesaw every day and see what I'm sending them. Um, you know, what what is Mrs. Gardner going to show me or share with me now? You know, so I've tried to create some writing prompts uh, where students use different pictures, different templates to then create a pencil to paper product to share with me. Um, so, for example, this is just a weekly uh, writing prompt that I send out called Secret Shake. And I created this with Keynote and pretty much the students just watch a brown paper bag shake and tip over and three items fall out of the bag and there are different items each week. And then the students are prompted to create two sentences about using the items. Um, I do give them sentence starters to start their writing if they need that extra support. And the items that fall out of the bag have a word label so that they have that support as well. So just once again, creating that curiosity, that excitement of what are we going to see today and a task that they can do because they have the sentence starters, the labels and the pictures. Right. The and the one we're looking at, looking at right now for listeners is that there is a little brown paper bag that it shakes, it jiggles, then it turns upside down and three items fall out. And the first item is the beach item. So there is a, there is a, there's this white sand dunes and the palm trees and overlooks the ocean. And the next one is like two really crisp red apples. And then the last one is a gorilla with its like lips pressed out and it's like looking to the side. And each of the pictures have a word, they, they have a word above them. And so uh, kids are like, now write a story or write something about using these three words, yeah. Um, and I think something like this, you know, this activity I could use for my kindergarten students or I could use for second grade students, right. um, you know, depending on their level and their ability, write one sentence, write a story. Um, so it kind of is differentiated within itself. Right. Um, another activity that I created as a writing prompt the other day, which was super fun, I used the new um, Google 3D Animals. I don't know if you've explored that where on your phone, you just Google search an animal and um, it gives you an option for a free um, like 3D AR experience with the animal. Wow. So I created this new digital writing prompt um, about I recently got two new pets and I need to choose one to keep. So I need you to help me figure out which one I should keep and explain to me why. So... <laughs> So on the one side she has a penguin and then the other side there's a panda. So Katie is right now sitting right by her fireplace and she's she has her iPad recording it and but the thing is the the 3D animals pop up and so she's yeah. like introducing it to them with playful, fun music. Yep. So I just um, screen recorded the Google search and I chose a penguin and a panda. Um, so in the video, I'm looking at both of them and kind of like, well, which one should I keep? Um, and then I just created this digital writing prompt in pages. You could do it in pages or a Word document with the, the sentence frames for the students to start their writing with. Um, and then a word bank. And I just chose uh, a visual of a panda and a penguin and I put a couple of um, describing words for them to use in their writing. So once again, they have the sentence starters, they have the word banks to choose from. And um, yeah, they thought it was super fun just trying to be creative and exciting for them. Right. So um, this is what the document uh, says. Mrs. Gardner's new pet. I would choose the, and so there's a line for kids because it can, and then there's a line and then a full stop. The next line is, it is, and there's a line and there's a space for kids. It has, 
and then there's another line. And on the panda, there are words. Like the panda, is, there's a shape of a panda, and there's words inside. So like it's a animal shaped word bank. I love it. Friendly, crawl, fluffy, fur. And outside the panda, she has a panda, the word panda. And on the other side, there's a penguin. And it says playful, soft, feathers, waddle. Sorry. Playful, soft, feathers, waddle. And outside, it's a penguin. And so kids right now have these awesome, this, these awesome sentence starters and sentence frames. They have a context for writing now. They're so engaged because they see their teacher and they see all these animals pop up in her and by her fireplace. So you just downloaded the, you search for Google animal and then you, how did you put it as part of your video? Sure. So, um, and once again, so with this writing prompt, when it's rolled out to the students after watching the video, I do record myself reading it and pointing to the words as I'm reading them. So I want all the students to be able to, to complete this. So they, they have the visual, they see the words, they've heard me read them. So, so they are able to do it. And then after they fill in the blanks, they record themselves reading what they, they wrote. The, the penguin did win. So everybody wanted me to keep the penguin. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so adorable. So, it was pretty easy to make the video. I just, on your phone, just open up Google and type in the word Panda. And then you'll see the option for view in 3d and you select that option and you kind of scan your phone around your, your room and the, the animal will pop up in like a 3d augmented reality. Um, in your camera. Visual. Uh huh. In your camera, and I, I just. I did that, and then I, I uh, screen recorded on my iPhone right. um, when I pulled up the panda. Right. And then I to create the background music and the intro slide, I put it into clips using the clip app. Uh, so it's so it's all on your iPhone or an iPad. You usually do that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. It, it was it was fun. And another really simple uh, writing prompt okay. that I've had students complete is just an I spy. So this has been really fun for them to do because they've been able to find things around their house to share with me. And it also creates, you know, a listening task where I roll out a template that says I spy and it has three areas for them to take a picture and upload the picture. My um, directions, depending on the task to students, would be for them to, let's say, for example, um, I spy something blue. So then they would have to go find something in blue in their house and take a picture and upload it to um, the location of the picture where the picture goes in the writing mm -hmm. template. I spy something bumpy and they would have to go find something bumpy. So you're incorporating, you know, vocabulary, listening. They get to share um, a part of their personal life and then they can write about it. So I have a, a writing prompt to follow this as well. What's the writing prompt? So it would just be if it was um, the blank is blue and the students would have to put in whatever they found in their house that was blue. So I spy a blue and then they found, the student found a blue crayon, took a picture of a blue crayon and wrote the word crayon in the blank. I spy a yummy, the student found a picture of a cookie in their pantry or kitchen and put the word cookie in the blank. I spy my in the directions it was um, find a friend or a family member. And so he took a picture Adorable. that he had at home of his cousin and said, I spy my cousin. So they wrote the words and then they recorded themselves um, reading what they wrote. Could you push play? Can you share this? Sure. I spy a blue crayon. I spy a Jummy cookie. I spy my cousin. So what you're seeing here is that she has it. It's translated into Spanish as well. And so where it says start your sentences is comience sus orancias así. And so students are, are seeing it in Spanish, but they're also seeing it in English. So they have that the dual language and parents can support the kids there as well as you can, you can see it. And then the kids are typing it. Uh, you you send this to them in. How do you send this to them? Seesaw. Ah, you send it to this in seesaw, and it's the slide is in seesaw, so they're able to type in the boxes. Oh, mm -hmm. that's right, because it's a photo. 
Yep. Yeah. So um, this is one where they could type in the answers. Um, and then also some of the other digital writing prompts I'll send will prompt them to do pencil to paper and take a picture and upload it. Right. Um, right. But this one, they typed in their answers. Right. So right. you could do it either way. Right. You know, sometimes it, it, I found in the classroom having them type on the iPad, um, on the keyboard, it, it was difficult. It's hard. You know, we don't have really keyboarding classes anymore, mm -hmm. um, and especially for students that don't know the letters yes. yet. So um, it is difficult. But you can do all sorts of different uh, digital writing prompts yeah. if they type in the answer or right. if they write it and pull the paper right. and take a picture. So, so if people are not familiar with Seesaw, I mean, I use Seesaw at my school, but I don't, don't use it this way. And I was like, oh, that's I didn't know you could have kids type in little boxes in, in Seesaw like that. So mm -hmm. I guess what I'm saying is, if you, whatever platform you're familiar familiar with using, use that. For example, if I'm really familiar with Google Slides, and so if I was to teach five-year-olds, I would do the same thing with Google Slides, and I would create little boxes for kids to type in their text. And then uh, I would have kids insert their photos as well. And so this student has, has already inserted three photos, and, and then I would also have them record. And so you can just have, you don't, if you're not familiar with, with Seesaw, you find other uh, the tools that you use the tools that you are familiar with. You don't have to learn Seesaw to be able to do something very similar. The concept here is getting kids to read, to write, to speak, and to show their, their thinking. It, and it's not just receiving information, it's creating with, with information. Um, here would be exam an example of one where my students listened to a writing prompt and then wrote pencil to paper what they heard. Um, this same activity would be something they would find in my listening center, um, in my classroom. So can, can we hear the all prompt? I did? Sure. This is great. I know listeners are going to really appreciate this. So if you're listening right now, I'm, I'm screen recording this so that you can see it. Uh, uh, we'll put it on YouTube as unlisted. And so you, it'll be in the show notes so that you can see how Katie is doing this. So in my classroom, um, if you were in my classroom and the students were completing this task, if this would be in a QR code on my listening center um, on the wall. And I would probably have anywhere from four to five of these QR codes for students to scan on the iPad and they would see a video that looks like this. I do a jig below the rainbow. <laughs> So um, they listen to the sentence and then they write the sentence that they hear. Right. So Katie has, what she has is this cute little fly 3D. Fly the kite. So Katie has this three little, adorable 3D version avatar of Katie. It's, it's so adorable. And then she has a picture of kite or she has the picture of rainbow behind it and she is she has the little her avatar dancing around the screen jiggling and then kids are trying to listen and there there's no words it's just the word kite or the word rainbow and kids are trying to write it down and she push she pushes play and she's already recorded her speaking really slowly and clearly to kids how did you do this uh, so I wanted to show you two really quickly. So because students are then asked to write the sentence they hear. Now, yes. if they were in my classroom, the QR codes would be placed underneath the word wall. So behind the avatar, they have that vocabulary word for them to see. So they're not asking me, Mrs. Gardner, how do I spell rainbow? How do I write rainbow? How do I write kite? So you, you don't need to ask me. It's right there behind the avatar. So yeah. we have that visual support. Um, and then... If it was in my classroom, the QR code would be under this, the word wall. And I, I make these sentences to have them practice writing their sight words that we're learning as well. So they're incorporating the vocabulary word and then the sight words, as well as writing a complete sentence. Um, because we didn't have my, my word wall um, in this remote learning task, I just created a quick writing um, prompt for them to look at the, the words. This would also incorporate our positional words. So I would have my positional words anchor chart beside the QR codes if we were in my classroom. Once again, we can't have that right now. So I just put um, some of the words that I know they might need a little extra support with on the, the writing prompt. 
And then they also have the vocabulary word in that video to help them. So what so we're seeing, the student, oh, sorry. Oh. So what we're seeing for the podcast listeners is a, a document or just a slide, and it has word bank in a color. And then there below, there's a circle. Inside the circle, there's the word jig, the word below, and the word fly. And then next to that, there's this roundish square thing, rectangle thing, where kids are supposed to post their writing with their finish. And she has instructions on the top and the bottom to help kids figure out what to do as well. And then you can push play now. I do a dig. I do a <laughs> Below rainbow. Below I like to fly the kite. So, so once again, just kind of a fun way for them to practice those writing skills, getting vocabulary practice, yeah. sight word practice. Um, mm -hmm. Then they're reading, they're writing, putting that pencil to paper. So right. they're reading, they're um, writing, they're speaking, they're listening to your instructions. It's really all authentic and it's really all integrated. So you, you, um, you make oh, and for that, to make those those videos, um, I use an app called My School Avatar. Yes. And um, in the app, you can create a little avatar that looks like yourself. Uh, if you had older students, you could have them create the avatar. And you just record yourself speaking, and the avatar, um, you know, says the words with you. It records um, as you you record your sentence and you can make your avatar do a different movement. And behind the avatar, you can place a photo from your photo library. So I just took a picture of a vocabulary word card and placed it behind the avatar. So you work inside the platform, yeah. my school avatar, you find, you create your own avatar. And then when you wanted to do something, you put it, you put a photo, you insert a photo, mm -hmm. and then you have a dance and you're recording it. You were, you're doing a screen recording. Um, yeah, in the app, you just push record and ah, okay, um, record. The, the video records yes. and it has the so picture great. behind right. it. And so like, if people are not familiar with these skills, we're not saying you have to do these. I think we're just giving you ideas of saying, here's technology to what I'm, what I'm noticing while Katie is sharing is she's sharing with them way instruction. So she's curating information. Then she's having them create. And she's using Seesaw as a create as the curation device. She's also using using Seesaw as the creation device. So the kids don't have to do mo go to multiple platforms. They're working inside the same platform. Well, I have so many things I would love to share with you. So like this is another writing writing prompt where the students are just using the things they have at home. So I just said, um, you know, create create a scene or a picture with your toys and write a sentence about your picture. Take a picture of um, your toys with, with your sentences in front of it or beside them and read me what you wrote. So um, this was really fun and the kids were super excited to use, use their toys at home. It's, to, it's so authentic. Um, it's so affirming to who they are. Can, can we, can you yep. play, can you play one that go back to that sure. one? Yeah. My Iron Man is going to take a ride in his truck. So here we have Iron Man standing beside his truck, truck and he's going to take a ride in his truck. Um, and a couple days before I rolled this assignment out, I actually had some Legos here at home and I created my own Lego scene, took a picture, you know, wrote a sentence, took a picture. So once again, I've modeled it. I've shown them my example. They they know what's expected, and then it was their turn to try it. So, um, Kitty, I'm loving this. Like it. It's so it's it it's a creation base where it's kids are learning. They're learning to read and write, but it's not just lessons of reading and writing. It's doing something as a task to engage their reading and writing and listening and speaking, and the creativity. Because right? you're not using this cat in the hat and the part in a <laughs> ball in, a, in the backyard. Kids are now putting things like I'm looking at a picture of like these, all these uh, like superhero action toys. Yeah, it was, it was fun. 
Okay, you need Here's to Here's an example of, this is an example of, this was more of a listening task, but it did have a follow-up writing task with it as well. Um, I created this on Keynote. So just, I thought of a different animal, food, tool, and a place. And then um, I put the picture of what I was thinking about in a Keynote slide. On top of the picture, um, I put what looks like a brick wall, and I start describing the object and the brick wall starts to fall down and the students have to guess what I'm thinking about. Can you guess my, I'm thinking of an animal, a food, a tool, and a place. Listen to my clues to see if you can figure out what I'm thinking about. Can you guess my animal? This animal lives in Africa. It is a herbivore, which means it eats plants. It has a white coat with black stripes. Oh, this is Can so you guess my animal? So the brick, the so she 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 has the zebra behind as a background, and then all these bricks as like mini mini images of, of walls, and then the transition that she's added is like a dissolving picture. So it looks like the the piece the, the wall is breaking up to small pieces and it slowly reveals at random. And so this is like a really high level skilled uh, transition example. So you can do an easier one where you just take a square and you just move it over slowly if you need to. But, but basically it's saying like engaging kids in a fun way of learning it. So it was just, um, they were listening, trying to guess what they saw, and then following it up with um, just a quick writing. So write, write about what was my animal, what was the food, what was the tool in the place. Oh, okay. So once again, just getting, trying to get them excited about a task that incorporates and integrates those different language domains. Can we hear this example? Sure. So now, where is it? The play animal animal is a zebra. Zebra. El otro. My play there there food is a taco. <laughs> the the two two. Is a pencil. The place is a mirror. <laughs> so that would be an example of, of, of the students and parents working together. <laughs> that is amazing because kids are, you have the instructions in Spanish and you have the instructions in English. You have it accessible for kids, the learning activity, the zebra being revealed. And then you have the parent working with the kid to help read. That is such a great, oh, and my heart is just filled. How many, how many kids are able to do that with their parents or do we need their help? Um, percentage wise? Well, when it, it depends on the student of who can do it independently and who, right. who might need a little help. Once again, it is rolled out with them listening to me, um, saying the directions in English. Um, I do always try and support it with Spanish and English written directions as well. So most of them, you know, are pretty much able to do it by themselves. Yeah. Um, and they know the specific words that you're trying to teach them, like playground, pencil, taco, zebra. They, they, like I noticed right. when they were playing. Just, yeah, um, and a lot of these activities, so I could roll them out the following week and just change out the pictures or the videos and the students know what to do. They know the format of the activity right. and what's yeah, the expected structure. of them, which is very similar to what they would find in my classroom at my center. So the format of the activity, the process of what they do with the writing center stays the same. Um, just just the vocabulary, the content vocabulary changes out. Um, so they're, they're very familiar. It's very repetitive. They know what to expect, how to complete the task, where to look if they have a question. Um, right. so, so I'm what I appreciate about this is that she's just using two, basically she's using just Seesaw. 
to share and kids are creating on Seesaw. They don't have to really go to another app. They don't have to go to another platform. I love this, your structures, your, your approach, because kids are creating, using language with your task. They're short little videos, they're accessible, and they are just authentic for kids. Thank you. Can you tell us, <laughs> oh, you have a reading choice board and you have a math choice board. Can you tell us about that? Um, sure. So these these are rolled out by the the kindergarten teams. So um, the regular classroom kindergarten teachers um, oh, roll out different choice boards weird. throughout the week for students to complete by Friday. Um, so they practice on different reading strategies. The reading choice board does. Um, usually the first square in the middle that students are asked to complete is to watch a recorded read aloud. So um, Students will watch one of the teachers um, who has recorded themselves reading our read aloud story, which is what we would have been doing in the regular classroom, conducting a regular read aloud. And then they have a choice board of um, options that they need to complete by Friday. So it might be retelling the story, um, writing and drawing about a personal connection you have, comparing and contrasting uh, different stories and characters from the story. And we also try and incorporate a STEM or show and share activity. So if it's um, creating a disguise for Little Red Riding Hood, um, a couple weeks before we were doing Goldilocks and in the story Goldilocks, you know, eats the bear's porridge. So um, we asked the students to write about a recipe for soup that their mom uses and Aww. create a a cooking video about how you would create your own porridge or soup at home. That's so culturally um, relevant. That's so affirming for the yeah, families. So it's, yeah, it's you're it's bringing them right. in. And we also incorporate right. vocabulary and um, kind of a what would you do situation. So making making the learning fun, always trying to incorporate those standards um, and those reading strategies or skills that we would be doing in the regular mm -hmm. classroom. They're getting that academic practice, but also having some options of creativity and creating and making and hands-on learning and not just screen time throughout the day. Right. So Katie has a three by three square, like a bingo board, and they have different activities. And so one will say, uh, tell, retell, personal connection, predict, what does blue mean, by the way? I you see it's, I feel like there's a color, um, color pattern. So we're asking students so that they're not doing um, each week, that, so they're not picking the same one to do each week. Oh. Um, if they could please create or complete one blue activity, one green activity, and one um, orange activity. Oh. The orange activities are more creating the STEM, the show and share. And the other ones are really incorporating those language art standards right, right. that we have to teach as well. So the green ones is compare, contrast, and vocabulary. The yellow, uh, orange one are, are uh, what would you do, stem, and show, and share. So the show and share is like very uh, affirming to their culture. I see we tell personal connection, predict, very connected to the standards, as well as compare and contrast vocabulary. This is so great. It's all, and it's accessible for kids. And, and we always have it in um, in Spanish as well. So yeah. We always roll out the choice boards in English. Oh my goodness, Spanish. that's so great. I'm loving this, this is wonderful. And can you show us your math choice board? Uh, sure. So math is um, pretty much the, the same format as the reading. We have in the middle are the required things to do or videos to watch. And then they are asked to choose one blue activity one orange or one green and one orange um, and we put in the visuals if they need that and you have a link for kids mm -hmm. so that would be to if it was a uh, um, Jack Hartman YouTube video of counting numbers or I'm so impressed so you, uh, so this is a lot of so the work you have is Asynchronous kids are doing it on their own with their families, but you also have synchronous activities where your kids are checking in. Can you tell me more about that? Um, sure. So like our, our check-in, like our feelings check-in. Yeah. Because I love um, how you started so, the podcast saying like, 
you lead with like like Larry Falasso said, you lead with lessons. Sorry, you lead with love, not lessons. And that's what you're doing. You meet, you first see how they're doing. Yes. So um, if it's communicating with my family through Seesaw or using Google Voice, I'm always trying to check in on them, message the parents, message the student on Seesaw. If it's a, vo a recorded voice comment or if it's a, a text, um, just letting them know I appreciate everything they're doing. Please let me know um, if there are any ways I can help you. I've spent a lot of FaceTiming, video phone calls with parents and students. If it's guiding them on how to use the iPad, getting it set up at home on the internet, you know, Zoom meetings, we're able to see each other. Or if it's something like this, that's just a, a daily check-in with pictures and they circle the, the picture of the emoji and, and tell me how they're feeling. You know, we are at my school, which I think is great, required to do contact logs. So with our students, you know, we write down the days that we contact them, who we talk to, what do we talk about, just to, you know, keep track that we're making sure everybody is okay during this time. I'm So I noticed something else about your Seesaw post that I just love. You have really clear instructions. So right now I'm looking at emoji, emoji daily check-in, and there are eight emojis uh, that she's created on a document. How are you feeling? And then she has English instructions first and then she has Spanish instructions. So the first one is like, click the pen micro, uh, my pen icon. And so she doesn't have the word pen, she has the icon. So kids easily see that. So it's visual for kids. And then the second one is circle and emojis. She has three emojis that describes how you're feeling. So that's an example. Third step is Select the microphone and microphones to those. So those, the microphones are pictures or, or, in, or emojis. Why you are feeling that way, press four is press the record play button and listen to your response. So she has a picture of a play button and an uh, emoji of the, of the little ear. And then the last one is press uh, the check box or a green circle with a check to it to submit your work. So kids are really supported visually through this process. This is so amazing, Katie. Well, I've, and and this is all, you know, thanks Seesaw has made it very easy to create those icons and pictures within your direction. Right. So, and the neat thing about Seesaw too is it already has a bunch of activities um, that other teachers have created and you can um, use those and, and share those or edit them to, to tailor the needs of your own classroom. Right. I know sometimes our time is precious, so searching through the activity bank is also very, very useful and, and gives you ideas, too, of how you can create your own lessons and activities. And so the kids record, and then you listen, and then you respond. And, this. and then is that and how I you do it? I try and make, uh, make a point to every, every item my students send to me or every task they complete. I, I try to respond or comment to every single one to let them know that it, I, I am getting their work. I appreciate their work. If they need to change something, I'll tell them what they need to change or go back and look at and resubmit it. Yeah. I do I do track and kind of grade every activity they do using the Seesaw Skills Tracker. So I'm able to see how the students are doing right. academically. Right. And when Katie says track, she put like, she grades, she put like air quotes around it because we're not really grading at this time period. Who, able to do that. So yeah, she's like saying, I'm just assessing or providing feedback. Yeah. Sight words, first 18, label family members. Oh, Katie, you know what I think we need you to do because there's so much. I think you need to, I would encourage you to just take one of your activities and then do a two minute stream, uh, like a voice recording or narration of that and send it out to Twitter and just share with people just like two minutes of doing that. Please tag me and I will share, 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 because I am just so <laughs> impressed. And I feel like we don't have enough time to to cover everything because everything you're doing, I just it could be like a daily thing, like just one two minute thing of you just sharing, because it'll change the practice that people are or because they just they're just getting ideas and they're becoming inspired. Okay. Well, yeah, I can I can definitely do that. Um, oh, so this was just another writing activity that um, I had my students complete. This was in Keynote, and it's a choose your own adventure. So um, students will play the Keynote, and they will select the item to kind of 
decide where I will go on my adventure. And then they write about what happens to me in the adventure they chose. Choose your own adventure. Listen to Mrs. Gardner's story and click on an item to choose your adventure. Write about what happened in your adventure first, next, and last. Use the words in the picture to help you with your writing. One day, Mrs. Gardner wanted to go on an adventure, but she couldn't decide where to go. She could go explore in the city, go back to her house, or go hiking in the mountains. If you would like Mrs. Gardner to go to the city, click on the red car. If you would like to, Mrs. Gardner to go to her house, click on the mailbox. If you would like Mrs. Gardner to go explore in the mountains, click on the backpack. So here students are able to, on their keynote and their iPad, click on the object of where they would like me to go. And then depending on what they click on, it takes them to a different slide. So um, kind of thinking about, I don't know if you ever read when you were growing up those choose your own adventure yes, books where yes. it's like, if you want to go here, turn to page 35. If you want to go here, turn to page five. So you, you sent this um, so keynote to them, right? Is that how you did it? I'm sorry. So you sent this keynote to students or how did they have access to this? Document? I did. So um, students had keynote um, downloaded on their iPads. So I just, I put my keynote presentation into a shareable link and sent them out the link and they were able to open it and um, open up the, the keynote and follow along. So depending on which one they choose is where I go next. And then they write about where I went first. Next. Where did you put the sound recording? Oh, inside of Keynote. You already embedded inside of Keynote. Is mm -hmm. that right? And then, uh, so to create it, I just, um, the different objects I put on the screen, you can just link them to a different slide. slide. So uh. when they click on the object, it will go to the slide where they go next to create the Choose Your Own Adventure. Where did you get the background pictures? They're so colorful and fun. Oh, oh thank you. Yep. So I get I have usually all my pictures on Unsplash or Pixabay, which are free. Um, yeah. Free relations. Free yeah. So you have first. Yeah. They're all connected. So you, if you're familiar with Keynote, use it. She's basically just using transitions. If you're not familiar familiar with Keynote, then use another. Uh, platforms such as Google Slides or Microsoft PowerPoint, whatever you use to help kids transition slides, you're going to just animate them. Yep. And then they wrote down with a pencil and paper um, about the adventure that they went, that I went on, that they chose, and then um, took a picture of their writing and uploaded it to Seesaw. So I was able to see, you know, oh, Iker decided I needed to go to the mountains and he wrote about my mountain adventure. And Alexa decided I went to the city, so she wrote about my city. The students really enjoyed it. It was neat. Could we see examples? If not, sure. it's not a problem. I'm just so impressed. So what I see is like she's not just giving them worksheets to do, uh, electronic worksheets. She's actually creating learning experiences where kids get a stimulus, they get a prompt, they have all these supports as they're working, and as they're thinking, and then they use all these word banks, all these labels to help them create a story. But the way she frames it, the lesson is as not just repeat what you saw, but it's create or it's to design or to make. So this is great. It's really great critical thinking as well, Katie. I'm so impressed. Oh, here would be one. Iker. Um. So this is my friend Iker, and he decided that I was going to go to the city. And if you follow the keynote along, if you choose the city, this is actually what happens to me. Um, so first I went to the city. I took my money to the bank. And then I went to, let's see, she camp. And, oh, no, he, this one's not correct. But this would, would be an would, example of right. he, he wrote pencil to paper exactly right, right. Because he was, so you had, you, he clicked on the car, took him to the city, and then he heard you recording, your recording saying first she went to the city. 
Mm -hmm. right? And then he wrote it down. Yeah, so he's practicing yeah. that. Yeah, he's practicing his, his, his sentence structure. He's practicing the listening. He's practicing his spelling, his writing. It's good. And then, um, like all of the activities with Seesaw, I use the skill tracker. So I'm able to tag the skill, the activity, mm, yes. and then give him um, however many stars he I think he deserves. Right. So. All right, Katie, is there anything else you want to share us before I end the podcast with our closing activity? No, I don't think so. Um, thanks for letting me share some of my activities. No, and no worries. Can you show us your, your, your screen, get it, your, uh, your wonderful, beautiful classroom? It's a so, oh. <laughs> when I look at this, I can't believe that I'm looking at a trailer. It doesn't look like a trailer. You have to go online just to see her picture. This is so impressive. Okay. Let's end with something called traffic light teaching. It's a metaphor. It's like su suggestions. Um, red is something that you ask teachers to stop doing during this experience or meaning like just teaching in general. But it'd be nice if you could do it for this context. Uh, yellow is something that you ask teachers to slow down or question or consider uh, slowing down. And, yellow, and green is something that you say, yes, do this as much as possible. Okay. <laughs> you can go in any order. I, I would say for the red, I believe strongly in keeping the rigor, especially for our early learners or young learners. I find that a lot of times my tasks um, on the outside might seem kind of complicated or too hard, but with the right support, scaffolds, resources, modeling. You know, my five-year-olds always rise to the task and rise to the occasion. And um, I think we should just, just never underestimate um, our students. Right. And you know, they're, if they're ESL, if they're kinder, if they're newcomers, if they're you know, um, special, special learners, just they, they can do it. They can do it. Um, it's just up to us as the teachers to provide them with the tools to be able to complete it. Um, when I look at so, your kids' is, uh, samples, I'm always impressed. And wow, I can't believe she's getting kids to do this at five year at, when they're five year olds and they're beginners. I'm just so impressed. You really see when uh, Pauline Gibbon says, "High challenge, high support." And you definitely give them all the support they need, and yet they are still able to perform at, your, at the level you, you want. Which is, I'm, I'm so, I'm so impressed. No, oh, thank you. And I think for for the yellow, just I, I think especially during this time, we realize that sometimes technology can be a scary thing, and it can be intimidating as teachers and for students. Um, but give it a try. Um, you know, just, just give it a try. And, um, like in this situation, it's, it's been really helpful and really useful for students to come into our remote learning journey with some kind of a background knowledge on the technology and how to use it. Um, and once again, it's not all screen time. It's not all digital tasks. It's finding that balance, which is in my classroom, um, I really try hard to do where they're using the technology to then create. Yes. Um, so it, it's not all screen time. It's, it's finding that balance. And um, I know sometimes it's teachers, it's always, it's, it's overwhelming. The technology is, there's always new things coming out, new apps, new things to learn, but um, it, it it really can be useful and helpful to the learning um, of our students. Right. I so think that's like, to use it. <laughs> don't be scared to use it. Exactly. I know that you're an Apple distinguished educator and so people don't have to be at your level, but I guess what people are taking away, I hope that people take away is that uh, we can use tech as a tool for kids to, to stimulate their creative skills, their creative abilities, get that, get them, uh, excited to produce something and when that is the power of tech we can create something on our side to get them motivated and they can use technology to help create and to use their skills yep um and i think for the green just just continue to keep the learning fun um i want my students to 
continue to look forward to coming to my classroom or, you know, at this time, look forward to opening up their seesaw and seeing what is Mrs. Gardner going to send me to do now? Like what, what is she going to show me to, um, what kind of videos is she making or what, what am I going to have to do? Excited about, about the tasks, excited about the learning, um, and the creating. So I think just, just as teachers, keeping the, the learning fun and exciting, especially during this challenging time. Yeah, it's about the emotions. Students are isolated in their homes and, um, you know, feeling all sorts of different emotions. So uh, if keeping I, it fun and engaging. If I was a five-year-old kid in your class, I would be so excited. I'm like, yes, what <laughs> video is she going to create? I want to see more penguins. She has a panda? And it's just so... It's not it's not monotonous. You 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 can I can tell that you really put a lot of time in creating the content and creating the learning engagement activities for them. This is I'm just so impressed. And they then they therefore they put their effort into to responding because it's fun. It's not just typical school. It's engaging. And this is what they need. Thank you. You're welcome. I have fun creating it, so it's fun. <laughs> Well, Katie, I recommend that teachers follow you on Twitter. And I, she is just, she is like, for me, Katie is the tech guru for language learners in the elementary schools, particularly in the lower elementary, the younger kids. I'm just so impressed with what you do. We're waiting for your book to come out. We want more blog posts. We just keep tweeting everything. Whatever you do, just tweet it out so we can learn from you. Because even that one tweet that I saw that one day, it was like something shaking and things falling out. I was like, oh my goodness. Yes, I need to share this. And people were like, oh my goodness, thank you. And I shared it on the Sidelitz um, webinar for virtual reading instruction. And I was like, listen, I, I teach fifth graders and I work with middle school and high schoolers. I don't know how to deal with like little kids, but I know people who do such as Katie Gardner here. Let me share this. Oh. And people were like, and they were I commenting, they were like, that's such a great idea. How does she do that? And I was like, I think she did in the keynote. Oh yeah, no, you're welcome. Yeah, exactly. And I, I'm more than happy to share anything. So I've sent that, that keynote to a lot of people just to, um, all they have to do is change out the pictures and the words. <gasps> oh my goodness, could you share that with me? I, I'll keep it on my, I'll put it on the, uh, the show notes, the keynote with the, with the bag thing falling off? Yeah. Great. Yeah. Oh, cool. I can send all that. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome.